Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. This one is for the weekend, beginning Friday the 13th of March. So March, Friday the 13th, 2020. What do we got going on here? Well, it looks like we have a moon in Libra, <clears throat> as far as the constellation goes. Um, in Western astrology, we'd say it's a Scorpio moon. Now, the old Vedic lunar nakshatra that this moon is in is known as Vishaka. And Vishaka is ruled by Jupiter. Vishaka is three quarters in Libra, one quarter in Scorpio. And Vishaka's symbol is the potter's wheel. It's the triumphant gateway. It's also an oak tree spreading out because Vishaka means forked or branched. And it's sort of this place where we're wanting to take over areas. And the centrifugal force can be so great with our ambition that we really need to center ourselves. That's why the potter's wheel is a symbol. And the triumphant gateway can be like new births, trying out new things. Um, it can be with, um, that's, we're born through women. And, you know, it, it's sometimes at least, you know, I think part of the male perspective is a triumph when you've um, entered into a new woman. Um, so the triumphant gateway. And it would go with the opposite nakshatra, which is Barani, which actually rules the Oni. I mean, Kritika would be the other part of the opposite nakshatra from Vrishaka. And so when we look at Vishaka, we're looking at, we realize that too much is never enough and that we're going to have to limit some of what we're able to do. And that the only way out into bliss is with spiritual understanding and liberation. Now there's two ruling deities to this lunar nakshatra. One is Indra, who's like the god of gods, who's very lusty, who's, you know, good at fighting, nobody can defeat him, never gives up. The other one is Agni, and Agni is the god of light, it's the flame and the candle. And we see Agni ruling Kritika nakshatra, we see Indra ruling the Jaishta nakshatra, the last part of Scorpio. There's only one quarter Scorpio in, in Vishaka. So we have a lot of Venus energy too from the Libra. A little bit of Mars and it's Jupiter ruled. So there's this expansion. How how much can we love? How deep is our love? How far are we going to take our love? Um, you know, we're coming down from a full moon that uh, took place on Monday. Monday night, and um, I guess, or Monday morning rather, on Pacific Daylight Time. So, Western astrology, we say the sun's in Pisces. Um, sun will be in Pisces in Vedic astrology by tomorrow, anyhow, um, and, and so we'll have Pisces, Pisces by, by the 14th. Um, Sun and Neptune are conjoined each other right now. So really thinking about the spiritual depths and what's coming on with, you know, in-depth spirituality. We've got to think about these things. Um, other things going on. Well, let's see. Looks like we've got... Um, Moon squaring Mercury tomorrow morning early, so you know you could start feeling that tonight. Today on Friday, though, the aspects are super sweet. Um, Mars and the Moon sextile, uh, Moon and Neptune trying each other, and this is the thing when you get one of these weekends where you have water sign on a water sign, you know Pisces and Scorpio. It's like even though Scorpio is not usually a happy moon, it becomes a really happy moon. It's like, oh, you get to know your friends really deep. So people that are deep are going to dig on this moon, you know. And, and there's in Vedic astrology, you know, because sun's still in Aquarius at the very end, and moon's in the very end of Libra, there's this comma, you know, there's this love, there's this um, understanding and sort of sensuality that's going on as a part of this, you know. Mercury's direct now. We're just kind of closing things off from that last new moon, which was the Shadabishak new moon, which has a lot to do with health crisis and things like that. So, you know, um, the Purva Falguni full moon was like, okay, entertain yourself, rest, do what you need to do to kind of bring the family together. 
and now we're back to like expanding and wanting to get in our trips and so um, I'm going to just take it sign by sign right now starting with you Aries so um, greetings Aries and welcome to your horoscope so we've got Mars and Capricorn and Mars and Capricorn is an exalted place so I mean this should help you with career there's a lot of Capricorn planets there's Saturn there's Pluto there's Jupiter and they're all vying for positions of power. Now, Jupiter and Mars can have a lot to do with war. And because we're seeing the domination of political elitist control. You know, people who've been told all their life that, oh, we're just, we're land of the free, home of the brave, and everything's fair in elections and stuff. It's not. It's about money, and it's about power and greed. And so these really greedy, entrenched forces are hurting the common will of the American people right now. And so we're seeing some, um, some interesting conflict going down, and... Um, I think mainly in the Democratic Party, they probably played themselves um, in a way. It's unexpected. But um, now that Mercury's direct, and now that we're looking at what's opposite all these Capricorn planets is Cancer, and this is where North Node is, and it's sort of like we really need to honor our feelings. And what I've noticed is in political debates, people often resort to just like stupid name calling, you know, and Aries, you don't be like that. So show yourself to be a good leader at this time. Use that Jupiter calm. <clears throat> because once you have to get to name calling, it means you've lost and the fight's already over. Hmm. Greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, for you, this is the last week of um, winter, and, you know, springtime's coming, and Venus is in Taurus now. Did I say that? Where is Venus? Venus is hiding. Oh, my goodness, did Venus come off of this thing? It probably did. Okay, and what about Uranus? Uranus is hiding as well. Hmm. Okay. We'll make note that for next week. So we've got Uranus and Venus in the first house. And they've been together. So they're working together. So there's unconventional ideas about love. Unconventional. And if you're in an April-born Taurus, you're going to be experiencing it. If you got a Taurus moon in the first five degrees of Taurus, yes, you will be experiencing this. And all the people born in the sign of Taurus, eventually Venus moves pretty quick, you know. Although she's slowing down, um, she's going to go retrograde pretty soon. That's going to be an end, that's going to be another story, and another adventure. So I would say is just take your time, Taurus. Take your time in love. Um, this is a romantic moon actually tonight, Friday night, because it's in your seventh house, house of relationship that can elevate the moon. There's a lot of personal transformation going on in your life right now. Your social life is looking pretty good, fairly lively. So going out and enjoying other people. It's not going to be a bad thing this week. Um, I'd say, you know, come around Tuesday, that's probably going to be a, a, a powerful day. A lot of things are going to be coming down by then that we'll all, you know, for the most part, we'll notice Monday and Tuesday. And um, those are your lucky days. So here we go to Gemini. Yes, indeed. Well, greetings, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope. Um, oh boy, no, that's not Gemini. Well, that happens. Yes, here we go. Back to Gemini. Greetings, Gemini. Um, you know, Mercury was retrograde. It's not any longer. So now you're kind of picking up the pieces, moving forward, and especially in your work environment. That's where a lot of this Mercury stuff activity was going. And so you're adjusting your career, you're adjusting what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, you know, so much things happening in your eighth house with um, the Capricorn planets. Um, and what do we know about the eighth house? Well, it's other people's property, number one. It's like, it could be your partner's property, like in a, like a husband or wife. 
where they have power <clears throat> and you may not have as much power as you want in the situation. It's also occult studies. It has to do with lust and sexuality. It has to do with our intuition, ability to access it. And it's also what I've noticed is allowing other people to do things for you. This is a relinquishing of power, in a sense. But you can get other people to help you during an 8th house transit. A lot more than a 2nd house transit. And 2nd um, house transit, you'll have the funds. But, you know, the family might want to take it. But 8th house, whatever's given to you, it's also called the house of unjust rewards. Ooh. So, like, inheritance, it's not like you deserve it, but it's given to you freely. Always something to think about it. And you know, in your family, people, you should never, you know, you should be real even with the siblings and don't, you know, fight over it. I understand sometimes there's one sibling that's not doing so good and someone's doing great and doesn't need it. And those of you who are doing great and don't need it as much, you probably should consider being a little more generous, possibly. You know, I think that would be, that would be the thing I would say. Otherwise, I wouldn't, you know, pretty much even should be the best and some too much is never enough okay well greetings cancer welcome to your horoscope I mean, what am i finding here well what i'm finding is um everything involves relationships to you you know in a way you're kind of like the the queen piece in the zodiac puzzle <laughs> We need you. We need your sense of emotion. We need your sense of security with family. We need your sense of history. Let's bring up history. And so many um, different things. We also, though, a lot of times we have to realize too when we bring up history that a culture can evolve to being in a different place from where it was 40, 50 years ago. And if you don't respond to it appropriately, you're going to be really sorry. So, um, for Cancer, it's going to be a creative weekend. At least Friday is going to be super nice. going to be feeling the love. Um, you know, you might be doing some spring cleaning type of thing over the weekend in your house, getting stuff together. Um, by Monday, Tuesday, the romance vibe or whatever, you're having problems with relationship, whether it's your, your wife, your husband, your job, your boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other. Those things are what's going to be really um, getting pushed upon. But... The planets in Pisces, Neptune, Mercury, Sun, they're like guiding you, you know, they're saying, hey, there's a higher way to go in all this, and don't we feel better when we're on that higher road, so that's what I'd look for mostly in this. Um, oh, hello Leo, and uh, welcome to your horoscope, so thinking about Leo, I mean, you can't be everywhere all the time. And you can't always get everything you want. Um, both Capricorn and Pisces are really rough signs for Leo in general. Um, and here's why. Uh, first of all, you know, Capricorn, Saturn ruled, and all those planets are in the sixth house. And the sixth house can be small pets, but it's really often health issues. And the 8th house can be really, like, almost deadly health issues at times. Um, it could be sexual diseases. It could be people trying to put curses on each other. Really weird, heavy-duty stuff. Um, and it's a place where you have to give up some personal power in order to gain some. And, I mean, I think you do a little better with a Mars ruled house than you do with a Mercury ruled house. So maybe 8th house is not as heavy for Leo as it could be for other people. Alright? But there's, you know, there's a spiritual adjustment and you have to move towards faith. And, you know, and if you're in relationship, all these planets are hemming in whoever you're in relationship in. And so that they're having a hard time. Regardless of what you're doing, you know, it doesn't look easy to me. Um, personally, um, maybe at work things are exciting and you're showing a little more creative prowess in some ways, and that's elevating. Who, who couldn't use some of that, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, greetings, Virgo. Welcome to your horoscope. So, you know, when it comes to the world of Virgo, 
it's all about getting back in your heart, you know. And I mean, this is a time, you know, in this kind of arrangement, you have a lot of Capricorn, a lot of Pisces. Virgo does well. Virgo is a lover, ultimately, because love is service, you know. Service is part of love, and because Virgo gives such good service, they give very good love. And, you know, the fact that most of them are sidereal Vedic Leos, you know, they are like kind of soul people into their heart, you know, they're into this... They're in the truth, but they love entertainment, they love helping others. It's a complicated mix, you know, and um, you're part of that complicated mix. And so, you know, sweet talking, having a spiritual principle in your relationship, um, couples that pray together, stay together, these are the things I'd be looking at. That's what's going to improve your lot right now. And um, even with Venus and Uranus in the ninth house, it's like, let's go to the higher road, you know. Let's find a love that really inspires and is active and deep. Well, greetings Libra and welcome to your horoscope. So what, what we're seeing here is we've got Venus hanging out in um, your 8th house now. So there's just this along with Uranus. So, I mean, this is like a place where it's like where Libra gets kinky sometimes, you know. The secret side, you know, because Libra's often concerned on the surfacey, superficial, social niceties and stuff. I don't want anybody to think I'm bad or mean. You know, everything's got to be nice um, or fair. Got to consider others, be sharing. You know, and then keep those scales in balance. Um, but but in this particular thing, things can get a little bit out of balance. They can get a little bit of wacky, and you don't necessarily know how how far to take things or how far not to take things. And um, that's an interesting thing thing to go. It's like really like your home life is really where the challenge is. Older parents, um, whatever you're going through in the house, and then there's a challenge with you know all these planets in the sixth house. So you know there may be somebody at work that's a little bit contentious, and you have to address that and just work on keeping the peace in every way. That's where. That's for the win, and, you know, you're kind of holding it together a lot at in the workplace, is what I'm seeing. All right, so, here we go. Greetings, Scorpio. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, the moon was made for you today, my friend. Um, this is one of the better moons for you this year. And, um, as you're thinking about branching out and doing whatever... You gotta realize Venus and Uranus are in your seventh house. I mean, we don't see it here right now because they're they, they took a little vacation. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll be back on next week. Um, but um, Venus and Uranus are showing that um, you can be inspired by love, and it may have happened a lot quicker than you expected it to. Like, whoa, where'd this come from? I, you know, here I was high and dry, and now all of a sudden there's all this love and there's a spiritual purpose to it, and, and you want to follow that spiritual purpose. And you have a lot of friends, a lot of people in your own neighborhood that want to influence you somehow or influence what's going on. And um, some people would rather, you know, let the whole, you know, country go to down the toilet than realize that the weakest ones need to be elevated and we're only as strong as we're weakest link and because they're like worried about a handful of billionaires that don't give a flying F about this place they're actually working on their own demise this is like a really dangerous karma game that I think some people don't realize what they're playing into here but oh well we'll see what happens you know I'm, I'm not really an expert at politics or anything I, I just like to count the stars and uh, I'm counting on them to do good things and, uh, they always do, yeah, because they are subject to the Creator. And um, let us see now. Creator has got Sagittarius on on board now. So greeting Sagittarius, welcome to your horoscope. So you you start out, you know, Friday with being kind of hemmed in by all the Capricorn planets and the Moon and Scorpio. So you're like, oh my gosh, what should I do? But then you wake up Saturday morning, everything's cool. Moon's in Ca Sagittarius now, and so now it's like, okay. All right, I, I've got, you know, I've got purpose here. I'm, I'm working on my purpose, and, um, and that's going to go all throughout the week. Um, it looks like money 
Economic issues have been your major focus. So maybe you're working on your taxes. You've got some investment you're involved in that you're hoping will uh, produce something nice, reasonable for you. Uh, you also have um, home considerations, considerations about older parents, relatives, ancestry, family, household things, fixed assets in your house. If you want to sell something, move something to make it happen, that's important right now too. And you really, you desire change in the positive in some ways, but you realize you have a karmic debt that you have to look at too, you know, and so the desire is not going to get filled unless you pay a karmic debt. And so that's where that stands right now. Okay. Well, hello, Capricorn. I mean, for being Pisces time, it's all about you in a lot of ways. Um, so many planets, you know, um, Saturn, Mars, Pluto, Jupiter, <clears throat> and um, Mars being exalted. So Mars is really kind of running the shouts. And Capricorn has a wants change in some ways, you know. So on the most basic earthy level that change is going to come and change is going to happen and um, there could be lawsuits of a proportion that change the whole political system forever and um, the only way this conflict is going to get resolved because south nodes there too you know this is a lot of planets in capricorn and more on Monday and Tuesday because the moon's going to be there. So Monday and Tuesday, the news is going to be packed, folks, with lots of stuff. You know, there, there's no question about it. And it's going to be about upcoming changes. Um, but the way to do it is emotionally empathize with others. Don't just think of it all in terms of nuts and bolts because we're all human beings, even if we're misled. And I, I've been misled before. I could be misled again, um, and I'm hoping that you can give other people the benefit of the doubt that they might just be misled instead of demonizing them and name calling. Oh my God, they're supporting Bloom Turd, you know? <laughs> hey, he pays people, you know? <laughs> it's like, is it like one guy who's running is like rich enough to give everybody in the country money? I mean, that's wild to think about that. It's like, you know, there's like 300 million people here and this person could actually, oh, I don't know. But anyhow, greetings, um, Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, what do we got for you today? Well, um, really, it's like, like I was saying in the last weeks, it's once again, you're really hemmed in. Now, Venus and Uranus down in the fourth house, you know. Making your house a better place, it's a good project, maybe welcoming other people, having a little inspirational house party with a few of your favorite friends, that might be part of the remedy. Um, but there's a lot of karma, and there's a lot of stuff that's out of your control, and you're just going, oh my God, what is this? I have just opened up Pandora's box of just craziness. And that happens easily, so don't worry about it. I mean, I think... Just, you know, don't try and engage verbally in too much conflict because it never seems to go well um, unless you're able to really empathize with people and say, well, I imagine this makes you feel a certain way when this happens, you know, things like that. that that's probably fairly safe. Um, that's about as far as I go with that. So let's head on over to Pisces. Hello, Pisces, that somehow seems to find themselves missing at times. Um, what can I say? Happy birthday. Let's start there. Um, tomorrow will be Albert Einstein's birthday. Well, he's one of the smartest people. He had a, I think he had a, a Mercury in Pisces. Might have been retrograde, but even a debilitated Mercury can, can produce a genius. Um, it seems like your social life is real heavy right now. Parties, things to go to, Mars, Saturn, Pluto, South Node, Jupiter, and then of course Monday, Tuesday, we had the moon in that mix. So, I mean, are there parties on Mondays and Tuesdays? Where I live, there are. <laughs> and I mean, that is actually, I think, spring break too. So, there will be, yes, there will be, to answer that question, yes, there will be parties on the Ides of March. 
and another whatever excuse. St. Patrick's Day, all of that. St. Patrick's Day. What's the moon in then? I think it's probably in Aquarius. No, it's Capricorn. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, there's gonna be some there's gonna be some crazy stuff happening on St. Patrick's Day this year. That's all I can say. And um you know, that's and that's the party. The party could get out of control. And that's what Pisces needs to know. It's like, you know, keep it keep it on the lowdown, keep it on the chill. Um the moon today in Scorpio is lovely for you. It, it's, it might have you traveling. It might have you uh, seeing a guru, your teacher. It could be like hanging out with your father even. Um, exotic locales, foreign travel. But even the quest of just deeper knowledge is, is rich today. And, um, and just to act upon it even when there is chaos. And being a loving neighbor who's an inspiration, that helps too. Uh, in this period so um and uh thank you so much for being with me and i'm looking forward to doing this again with you next week when we do it on um the planetary persuader with me your host cosmic kev thank you so much